What up, Chipper Chaps? This is Chip Chat Chat episode 54. 54. This is Fu Ray. <laughs> and this is Chamba. What up, guys? Let's get right into this nerdy, nerd, nerd town. <laughs> Uh, we didn't get much, uh, TV information. Nah, like, it seems like TV, because S.H.I.E.L.D., Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right. they've said everything so far. We have but not this week, right? We have not no, heard anything from No, them. nothing about, nothing. Alright, so, uh. Nothing since, like, maybe two, three weeks. Or... I feel like there was definitely more than this on the DC side. <sighs> this is all that interested me. <laughs> Like if, was, like, if there was anything about Gotham, right. I probably would have just skimmed right through it. I know we it. watched the thing about Arrow, but yeah, I yeah. wasn't paying any attention to it. I knew Mr. Terrific's going to be on it. Right, right. Part of the team or something. Yeah, and they got a couple of There's other There's a guys, statue right? of Laurel. That's, really? Trailer. That seems oh, so well, weird. Okay, there you go. That's basically the, okay. the... There's a new Arrow trailer and a new uh, Flash trailer that talk about the season. Were they? Yes. Yeah, that's what we watched. My gosh, I thought that was the last one. My bad. <laughs> um, so there's that. On The Flash, it looks like they're bringing back the actor that played Jay Garrick. Yeah. Teddy Sears. Is that's that his the name. actor's that's name? That's the actor's name. And he's coming back to play possibly the Black Flash. That's what it... So cool beans for that. Also, the character with the black costume that everybody was like, who the hell is that guy? Yeah. Apparently that's the rival, yeah. which is a Wally West villain. Mm. Um, but he works for like a bigger bad. He's not like the main big bad of this season. Right. So, you know, that's cool, I guess. I don't know. I, for me, it's hard to get hyped about Flash until the season actually starts. Right. It's bizarre because like off season, Flash... We remember it as a good show. Right. But we're not, like, really looking forward. Yeah, I'm like, not dying. Yeah, exactly. I think um, I'm more curious of, of the four shows. Uh, right now, I'm most curious about Supergirl because I want to see their Superman. I'm interested, but I'm going to go only as far as those Superman episodes. But If, if the it first, sucks, I won't yeah, continue if, watching. That's what I'm saying. But if I that think first that's one, the one I'm, right now, I'm most eager to see. I want to see how Superman works in this universe and how they're going to connect yeah. her world to theirs. And that's the one I'm most interested and if, in. Again, if you've got a Superman in this, especially within the television universe, right? You don't really need in like anybody else. It's, well, we'll find out how that I works. Guess not. Yeah, I he's. Don't know. I would imagine if he's Superman, he's got other shit to do. Yeah, their yeah. Shit's, I their shit's right, small. Right. It's and like he, you can, he can hear. They're like, they got it. Yeah, he's like, he's. <laughs> I can read his their heartbeat. It's right. fine. It's fine. They've got it covered. Yeah. I've got other shit to do. I've got to. Take care of this world threat. Um, all right, so let's jump right into movies then, because we got way more for that. Mm -hmm. Not way more. Mm, but it was more. pretty slow, but... So we got the first... I, I mean, it says it's the first trailer for Max Steel, but I we definitely saw... Yes. Um, ...footage of this. Right, right. Um, Because we, we, we got curious. Like, yeah, we started looking for because it was supposed to come out last year. Yeah, so we're like, Max Steel, and then they showed like these behind-the-scenes type clips, right. and then... Some like uh, offset footage. I'm like, what? This looks pretty cool. Like, right. but, the design. Yeah, the design seem looks fine. cool, like, but like, oh, it's gonna be. It seems like it's gonna be for like a. It's almost like a, a higher budget Nickelodeon movie. Right. <laughs> well, you know? I, that's what it ended up looking like to me. That's what it ended up looking like. Even though I'm sure they were probably going for like Transformers. Right. They seem like they have a big idea for the action. Right. And you know what? The, all this did though is like the action stuff looks okay. Looks okay. It looks like a good TV movie. Right. But to me, what impressed me is actually the suits. The suits look, well, they got very detailed. That's it what was, I'm saying. I'm like, it's like, they definitely, uh, it's almost like they had the budget right. of a high-end Nickelodeon movie. All right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. the designers working on it were like for fully, right. like pro-level films mm -hmm. type. You know, it's like high-budget Hollywood films. But then all the scenes where they're talking to each other kind of seem right on the low budget. Right. Like I wonder if that's all the like reshoots or whatever that whatever took Who knows, them so right? long. I don't know. It's got delayed like twice, I think. That's nuts. But yeah, we saw the trailer for that. Well, this trailer that they mm -hmm. packaged as a trailer, I suppose. And I'm, you know, it's like we. I, it's the first time you heard of that steel. 
mm-hmm. character and his voice, and I was like, oh, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Like he never really. I forgot that that was even a thing. Yeah, I didn't even in any of the stuff we saw yeah. before. I never saw the because I, yeah, because I was never into Max Steel to begin yeah, with. Like, I don't. I, I saw didn't grow the up toys on that. Right. In I saw the toys. I was like, "What's that?" I go? never saw the show ever. Yeah, yeah. I don't. But think. I'd be like, I don't know what that is. Like, because I don't watch a Mattel t- movie, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, I don't know. Toy companies want to start the next. Comic I get book, it. No, like franchise I, I get it. universe. I thing. get it. It makes sense. It does, but I'm like, Look, trans- Transformers. They don't have the built-in monthly stack of lore that comes into those universes. The toys. Yeah, the Mattel universes. For the yeah. most part, they don't have the lore to support it. I don't even like know Like Transformers other... does, because it has Hasbro. comics. Yeah. yeah, like I'm saying like... Oh, right, right. Transformers does, because it has all these other mediums that it is inside. That's why it makes sense the for the Hasbroverse. But I'm like, Max Steel? But what? the Hasbroverse makes more sense because of right. that. You know? But like, what Max else? Max Steel's going to cross over with Barbie or something? Oh, shit, that's right. It's the other Mattel. God, that's so weird. <laughs> Isn't it? I don't know. But then it's not like they, they're making like Hollywood is making Barbie movies, right? Well, they're they're trying to. Oh, what, like a live action Barbie. I think movie? So, yeah. What? Why? <laughs> I don't know. Why? Don't know. That doesn't make. That's. I mean, it makes sense when you want to make a movie off of a uh, a cartoon, right? Because a cartoon most likely it, had its a series. Of, what if of they sorts. did it like bridesmaids, but they're all like ditzy blonde girls? <laughs> I don't know. But like, the weird thing they're about this though is because I, I think they're already making. I think they already do make like CG Barbie movies. They do, but they're all right. direct to DVD. It, oh yeah. Oh exactly. But can't they just take one of those films and just film it live action and? Let be, let like, that be a movie. I hope I hope not, because I've seen <laughs> some of those titles and they're always like Barbie and the Fairy Princess to save it, unicorn okay, see, land I don't from know. the Kingdom of Dark Magic. I, I don't know. know. I don't know if that's like if that's what happens. That's why I thought that's <laughs> that's amazing. I didn't know. Um, I don't know. I don't remember any other. But yeah, Mattel that Max. That, yeah, that's why I'm like Max Steel Mattel. Okay, uh, what like do do Mattel have like Hot Wheels? Is that I think so. I think because so. I, I I think I heard at one point they're gonna do like a Hot Wheel movie. I wouldn't. I mean, it would yeah. They did Speed Racer, right? Um, Doug Lyman. Yeah. Uh, from Edge of Tomorrow, the director of Edge of Tomorrow, great film, is going to be helming the Justice League Dark or whatever they end up calling it. Dark Universe. Uh, but yeah, because he franchise. was recently. He was supposed to do Gambit. But he left, and then all of a sudden this was announced, and it's like, oh, that's cool. Right, they. Uh, I think they were, you know, they, they were stuck in better. development hell mm-hmm. for Gambit. So he was like, "Fuck it, I want to do a superhero thing. I'm mm. out of here." And then DC's like, "Hey, what about? Uh, it's not really superheroes, but it's essentially superheroes." Do you think they made the right choice getting uh, Lyman? Lyman, if you had the choice of Lyman and Del Toro, who's doing the Dark League? Uh, I think just like Del Toro, but because well, he but, was the one that they were rumoring for right. Hell alone. But I think Lyman, because he's not as familiar with any particular genre he might be able to surprise us right you know like with del toro you know you're gonna get something of his vibe which right. is excellent because he has the you're most, watching it he has for, the most right? to gain like Absolutely. del toro doesn't have anything to gain no, by no, doing no. justice league Dark but if Green. lyman can like fucking blow the people's minds it's like this is like not unexpected yeah. completely unexpected and, and brilliant and if it's good yeah and if it's good he'll go over huge he'll right, be the exactly. next like james gunn or some shit which would be which it. easily like uh, David, see, David Ayer could have been right, but like James Gunn is a great like, example of that. Yeah, that's what I'm you saying. Know? Is, James Gunn's last thing was super. Have right, you seen that movie? That's which it's, real it's, it's fucking a, it's weird. an excellent movie. But I love it, but it's super fucking weird. It is, and also at a very much lower budget. I think like so, uh, at one point a tentacle monster like rips open his house yeah, yeah. and like rapes his brain mm-hmm. or something like that. Some weird shit like that. Uh, Dan Harmon from Community, creator of Community and of Rick and Morty fame, okay, okay. Yep. Uh, did some reshoot rewrites for Doctor Strange, reportedly. Yes. Do you know who the, reported this one? Um, I think uh, it was just today reported on... Um, was it The Rappers? Hollywood Reporter? One of those ones. Uh, it's, a, it's interesting. I wonder if it was to insu- insert more humor, like dark humor. Right. Because he gets dark humor. He does. 
Uh, he does, based on his community stuff. Right. Maybe there was some weird time travel stuff. Yeah, maybe, because again, <laughs> his, like, his community, his stuff on community were brilliant. I loved it. Like, And he's a really versatile writer. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, mind you, his humor is very specific, but because of that, he can, you know, try other things. And I, You know, I'm curious. Even if they had told me Dan Harmon was writing the script for Doctor Strange, I'd be really I'm like, interested oh, shit, in that. Yeah, like, like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, let's let's give that a shot. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Let's give that May- a shot. Hey, but you know what? Maybe that's an end for him to do some more Marvel stuff down the road. Dude. What would you want Dan Harmon to write with... Pick all right. He's writing, yeah. and then pick a director, and then but pick the property as well. What would you want? What would you want him to specifically write? If Deadpool was part of the Marvel oh, universe, dude. Um, that'd be interesting. Who would you want to direct it? You get Tim Miller still. Probably, I think so. Yeah, stick. They, yeah, they can't. I don't know why they would change it. Yeah, yeah, it would have unless make... Dan wanted to direct it himself, and that was part of his deal. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not discrediting television directors. Right. Television directors directed also directed. Hey, remember those other two community yeah, yeah. directors, right? The exactly. Russo brothers. The Russo brothers. Exactly. Um, they did movies. So you know. Yeah, it's kind of okay, sure. <laughs> it could work. Plus, he's got. All right. How about if it was not choice. Deadpool? Because Deadpool is. If it's uh, something Fox. specifically Marvel, it has to be Marvel. The, th- the first thing that came to mind was Howard the Duck, but I'm like, no, I don't want to see that. What about She-Hulk? I don't know, man. I think She-Hulk, in my opinion, is better for a Netflix What about thing. the Squirrel Girl? Maybe. maybe. If they wanted to do something really weird with, squ- with Squirrel Girl, then maybe. I'd be fine with it. Because if, like, they can, they can just give it, uh, like, Deadpool budget. Right. But, hey, if you know, if you know the right, got the right tools. Right. You can make like a Deadpool film on Squirrel Girl. Why not? They've got similar ability to do impossible things. Uh, Transformers. Yeah. The last night to it's involve called. both Cybertron and the magic of Merlin. You wrote down. <laughs> I wrote. That's what I wrote down because I'm like, wait, the magic of Merlin specifies. Right. It's basically there's a it's something Earth based, obviously. Right. But the, something that links to. The, the report we heard was yeah, it's ridiculous. Optimus needs to go back to Earth to uh-huh. retrieve a relic. A relic of the planet. The, a relic that was the item that gave Merlin his abilities yeah. in Camelot. In King Arthur's. King Arthur era time. Yep. Uh, so, sure, whatever. <laughs> sure, whatever, man. It's a thing that's crazy, right? You think we get robot horses in this one? Just, right, is it, is there a transformer that's a horse? It wouldn't surprise me. You don't know. I don't know. No, I can't think of one. Well, that like, would have instantly solved that. It'd be mystery. strange because it's like, is it a transformer? Is it a horse large enough for the transformer for another transformer to use as a horse? Right. Or is it like, does it transform? Is it like a a size changer? Right. Which you know, fuck, like what Megatron. About, what about? And he just transforms to the size of a regular horse. Right. Is there so a is he that kind of? It turns into a sword. I don't know. That wouldn't surprise me though. Right. That yeah. seems like a thing. It's transformers that transforms into heads of larger robots. Why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> That's something. Why the fuck not? It's pretty interesting. <sighs> but yeah, this this the premise for this film, for the next I'm, I'm Transformers excited to film. See no, I'm Cybertron. gonna watch it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm excited for that, but. Going back to Earth and then just like, oh shit, horses. I gotta <laughs> go back. Know. We're we don't know. This horses. is all assumption, obviously. We have no idea. I, well, but, I'm sure he'll have a sword. Oh, of course. He had a sword on the last one. Right, that's what I'm saying. He'll yeah. have the sword. Yeah. Will, will there be some Excalibur like. Oh, he's gonna have a like Excalibur to it sized with, sword. With the yeah. relic that he gets? Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What if they give him a Buster sword? Uh, what if they do basic because Hot Rod's in this film? Okay. Basically, they Hot Rod is the successor to supposed to be. He was the the successor so from the movie. Do you think that that means? How about if they did that? That's what I'm saying. Do you think that means Optimus dies in this one and actually just dies because and... they're like, we got to do this before the guy who plays Optimus goes. Right. Let's cast the uh, let's let's cast, let's, a let's, let's cast somebody, but not a somebody. Young yeah, yeah. Did the did hot in the old cartoon was Hot Rod voiced by Optimus? No, so it was a different guy completely. Different guy, different guy completely. Yeah, man, that's that's how you write that dude out of the movies, right? I 
He's, Maybe not, that, he's, he's not, not that old. Maybe they want to freshen it up. Oh, that's crazy. But, like, if they did it based on the original animated movie, that's who, fucking, that's who shocking. Who would you want to be the voice of the new Hot Rod? Oh, I don't even know. Is he cast already? No. They haven't given a cast. Well. And, like, they did the whole Matrix thing and he grows and shit. What? That's what happens to Hot Rod in the movie. He uses the power of the Matrix. He turned from he turned into a he turned from Hot Rod into Rodimus Prime using the Matrix. Keanu Reeves's Matrix. On no, not Blue that Ray. Matrix. <laughs> I don't the know Matrix the is that fucking <laughs> that their cosmic cube thing in Optimus's chest. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a matrix so of that's leadership. That's called the Matrix? Yeah, it's it's called the Matrix of Leadership. Did they call it that always in yes. these new movies? No, they don't have it in the new movies. What the fuck was that cube thing? The cube is just some... It's, it's not... It wasn't... That wasn't the Matrix. They did have the Matrix later on in the movies. Though. What was it? It was... It looks like... A, it's like a ball with like two bladed... Blades on the other end kind what of What was the thing in the first the movie? The cube was... I don't know, I forgot, man. The cube was a cube... But it all it it made it was I think it was maybe robots. it was like a, an energon cube it was supposed energon? to be like an energon cube because that's sure. what they used for fire. I what, I'm I'm forgetting right now. You're the you're the. I know, I, and the thing is, know. yeah, I'm sorry because I do like Transformers a lot, but a lot of the older stuff. Nope, my memory's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so Christoph Waltz is in talks to star in a Ali- in Angel Alita mm-hmm, Battle, Battle Angel. Angel Alita. Yep. As as the villain of it. No. Okay. Uh, I was looking it up, and it seems like... Who is the villain of Battle Angel? Is it another is. girl robot? No, it's just another... Uh, it's essentially the guy's higher up. Like a business? Well, yeah, the people She that doesn't live. have a combat enemy? Yeah, it's a co- like they, they launched down a combat enemy okay. for her, and he's like the cha- he was the champion up there. Okay, so they have played the corporation the, yeah. bad guy. Yeah, yeah. But not the guy she fights. No, the corporation bad guy that she fights. That's who Christoph Waltz is playing? No, no, no. He's playing the guy that, that brought her to cor- life. Oh, he's playing the good guy yeah. side. He's the Dr. Light or whatever. Which was, which was weird. That's why I was like, that's weird. Because the Maybe way he was drawn... To do something different. I guess, but the character is so visually different. Right. That I don't know how he's they're going to do it. a big black dude with dreadlocks? No, he's a tall, tall, lanky they, dude. They can make him tall. He wasn't... Yeah. He was, uh, he had that rocket scythe. It's legit. (laughs) Oh, the way it was animated. Beautiful. Uh, But, I mean, hey, uh, if this, then, you know, that means the movie's going forward then. Yeah, they're doing something. That's, which is excellent to me. I guess I'm excited about that. Sure, I'll watch it. I think uh, right now I'm at the point where I don't even fucking remember. I know I've seen it. Because I remember all the design and everything. But here's another one that's manga slash anime that's being remade in um, in Hollywood. Right. Like right now, MTV are doing the Death no, Note. Death Note, yeah. Uh, this is happening. Battle okay. Angel Alita. We just had Live Die Repeat, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Right. That was one also. Mm-hmm. They're trying to find yeah. the comic book movies that aren't. Com- that I, yeah. thought about comics so they go you know they, they try to so tap manga, anime. Manga, anime. and I think that's I think that's cool I, th- I think it's cool I think it's cool I hope that they don't go through all the, the good ones video game right like where let's pick all the properties that we want to do that are awesome first and fuck it up a bunch of times right. so that the people who come later can figure it yeah, out. It, it, I just don't want them the to rest. do that with all the stuff I love. Ghost oh, in the oh, Shell, yeah. I want it to be oh, good. Oh shit, that's, oh, I forgot about it. Write that, that's, yeah. And we saw those pictures too. Yeah, that's, yeah, about. I was, yeah, which I was going to write that in. Uh, which year? But I just, you know, I hope that one's good because. Which one? Ghost in the Shell. Oh, right, right. Because it's the, one of the very few anime I that, have yeah, a lot yeah, invested right. in. Exactly. But you have anything invested yeah, in, right. essentially, because, like, if they did, say, uh, Cowboy Bebop, that one might be the other one that you'd be like, oh, I'd be I was curious. really excited to see that, uh, but long-ass time ago, early 2000s, they were talking about doing it with Keanu Reeves as Spike, and it was going to be directed by Joss Whedon. That would have been something, dude. I would have loved to have seen that. I don't know if it would have been great, right, but I would but have loved to, yeah, to have seen that's it. That's a good he, one. He just got done with uh, Serenity, so he was doing you know space cowboy shit, and that's basically what that mm-hmm. is. And you know he's great at ensembles. Yeah. 
uh, Keanu Reeves as Spike, I think that would have worked. Is uh, it? It won't sound like. It won't sound like the dude. What's his name? The dude we met at Otakon, or not Otakon, yeah. but Sakurakon. I forgot. Man. Plays everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know his voice. <laughs> <What's his fucking laughs> Steve Bloom. That's it. Uh, it won't sound like him, obviously. Nah, I'm fine with but that. But if you think about what Spike's delivery is like, it's yeah. always stoic. It's always yeah. dry. Keanu Reeves would nail that. <laughs> it's such a good job. Think of what his character Keanu Reeves like. then. Yeah, even yeah. Then, you, then he would look like him yes. even more. I yes. still think he could play. Oh, him he could now. still play him now. Like, look at what he was like in John Wick. Dude, no, that's what I'm saying. That's basically that. You that's just pop him spike. in space. Yeah, just make his hair off. Because he's that badass. Yeah. He's essentially oh shit, cool. John Wick is thing. I'm okay with it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that's fine. See if that would have happened. Yeah. I would have been really interested in seeing it. Would but it didn't happen. Just but yeah, them. like there are there are so many that they can actually just you know let's uh, pick this one now. What's one that you'd like to see in the next couple of years? What's the next one you think they should start on right away? Well, it'd be we it'd, have the technology. I don't know how. Like, now. see, ninja films don't do well, so I don't know. I'd I like it'd be so random and cool if they did say. Well, see, the problem is Naruto is very Asia centric. It is, but it's also a blonde kid. Exactly. With blue eyes that's exactly it. it. So that's my. I say, like, cast everybody, everybody. Like, right. if you see a sand, like the sand people there, right. they can't be some white guy. Right. You gotta yeah. cast Absolutely. multicultural. Absolutely. Like, it's multicultural. But, like, if he's a blonde hair, blue eyes. They should make him a blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah, they should make him a blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah. Like, make there's no the, harm in going, oh, but, but he should be. His name is Naruto. It's like. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Right. I just, just make him live there. It yeah. doesn't matter. That's, it's cartoons. It's it's a cartoon reality. Like if we were supposed to believe, all right, Avatar, The right. Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. If we can sit down and watch a movie and just believe everything that's happening inside the movie, you right. know, as we're watching it, um, not believe it as in, as in real life, but like, you know, you're investing in it in a mm -hmm. sense. Lord of the Rings is like a great example of that. That's fantastical. This one is not even if as they fantastical. Did a, if they did Naruto as a live action movie, what do you think their that first arc needs to be? Where do you start and stop on a Naruto live action movie? It'd be great to show. It'd be awesome to have seen flashbacks of the past. I know everyone likes the origin story of Naruto. No, himself? just in for films when oh, okay, introducing yeah, yeah. new mm -hmm. things, but get to a really good part. But show why, like, say, if, it, if if it's about, like, the main character, say, splitting up, mm -hmm. but, like, really in a bad way, show why that means anything with so flashbacks and interactions. So you're talking about start at Shippuden? Uh, maybe, maybe before Shippuden. So you think they should be, this should start out as a movie about little kid ninjas. Why? Were they, weren't they, like, late teens in Shippuden? Right, but that's what I'm saying. If you start, if you go earlier, if you're talking about starting at the beginning of the Naruto. No, no, no. I'm saying the flashbacks would be the start of Nar the Naruto. So you'd cast little kids for flashbacks, a flashback. and you'd cut back and forth. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. As to why whatever's happening now, why why would mean anything at all? Did they fight that snake dude in Shippuden, or is he dead by the time that happens? I think he's done. He's the main. He was the main bad guy at the first. Primary, though, right? One of the primary. Because yeah. I think if they did little kid ninjas versus that snake ninja, yeah, yeah. I would totally watch oh, that. Oh yeah, it's like, like three ninjas with yeah, yeah. a fucking no, it was, like, amazing. See, that's budget. why I was. That's why I was asking like how old they were in Shippuden because I thought they were late teens in Shippuden. Right. And just before Shippuden is when they reached like six, fifteen, sixteen. Because I was imagining them fifteen, sixteen. I definitely did not. Not when it started. You were thinking. You were thinking like you were thinking. No, no, not I when it started. Like, I'm talking about when the film would start for me. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, not when the manga started. The manga started when they were just like kids. So yeah, they seemed like very young kids. Very like, like I think eleven like, or 12. yeah, ten at the youngest. So I would love to no. see that movie. Oh, Get that a bunch sick. of eleven-year-old ninjas. Honestly, try and do the best version of the best version you can do. Of the big names, the big right. anime manga title names. Uh, I'm not even talking about like the serious ones. I'm talking about like the ones that were like super hits. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, redo Dragon Ball. Like I'm no, surprised. eventually. I'm surprised they, they haven't, haven't announced something like yeah. that yet. Like like I know there's a lot of stink with there evolution, is. but I there think is. there's been enough time. And if you approached it the right way, yeah, you could totally do like, it. Like 
it can be done. Yeah. I watched too many. There's too many Stephen Chow movies to. to right. That's enough proof. But those Stephen Chow movies don't kill over here. They don't. He's not come over here to do one yet. I think he needs to come over here to do one. That's what I mean, though. No, I mean, like, he has to be the ideas people behind. Yeah, but I think stuff. Stephen Chow should come to America, oh, yeah, yeah. start doing movies in English, oh, yeah, yeah. see if he can get some crossover, because his movies are so interesting. If he could, I would love to see how he would direct an American cast, or just an English-speaking yeah. cast, just to be like, okay, here's my audition tape, going to make a weird American action movie in my style. If they like it, I'll do Dragon Ball. But anyway, like, in terms of, like, what manga and anime you would tackle... That's the one you would want to see? Uh, I'd, like, any of the, the big ones. Like, go for go for Naruto. Okay. Try and do Naruto. Try and do a version of Naruto. Try and do a version of Bleach. Because I think right now they just cast... They're doing a live-action Bleach movie in Japan. Okay. And they just... They started, they started announcing who the actors are going to be and stuff. Okay. And Have they done a Naruto yet? Not a movie. They've done they've done stage like stage musicals of all these, okay. stage plays of all these, right. but no live action movie, no live action series. So like this like Bleach is one of the first of those of that era. That's interesting. So, I never watched Bleach though, so I don't know right, how much I would. Right, right. Uh, they've done movies, you know, like they've done the the Rona Kenshin. Okay. They're fucking. It's the same company. I don't know, but like if it's if they do that quality for for Bleach, shit, it's gonna be good. Really? But they've done like the but weirder ones Ronnie as Kinshin, well. You're just using swords, right? Bleach, Bleach it's swords a, still. It's swords, but they're like gigantic, ginormous, right, right. fucking I'm, impossible I'm really, to use. I'm really weapons. curious. And they have to use. I know, I know, I get sport. it, I get it. I just, I'm curious how they're gonna do it. That's all. But like, I think it, try they, and do those things. If, if they filmed it like they those. were doing like a lightsaber <laughs> and just had like a green rod mm-hmm. with some marking things, just. Make the blade CG. Yeah, do it absolutely. <laughs> Have a sticker, but like CG the rest of it. Right. But it would be really, really interesting just to see what they can do. We're talking about Hollywood films, correct? Mm. Hollywood films of those mongas. But no one in particular you think is should be the next one. Should be the seen. next one. So <sighs> you would pick Naruto or Bleach over. Well, they're, one again, punch they're doing Man? Death Note. Ugh, I don't know. One Punch Man. It's too soon. It's like it's way too soon. I think they wait too long. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I think they if wait too long. If here is a thing. If, if they announced oh, dude, that's One not, Punch Man would be coming out yeah, hell yeah, two it. years from now, yeah. while the buzz is what it is yeah. right now, hell that's yeah. how you get people to go to these Oh, things. they would watch it. They're making they're making Ghost in the Shell now. How yeah. fucking old is that shit? Oh my gosh. One Punch Man would look so cheap and ridiculous. If they did it in the US, no. No, but even in the US. I it, don't think so, man. <sighs> I, I can, think with Deadpool budget, you could make a sick one. Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. Just as long as you do the shit right, it I think you could do right, it. Andy Samberg. <laughs> I'm still down for that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure people are like, no. Honestly, though, that's, what, what to me, that's my hysteria. Because he's not going to be Saitama. No, no, no it's obviously not. Because it's the name. It's Sa- be Saitama's like the, Steve. Oh, it's the name of the town. It's the name of a place. It's the name of but it's almost not the place on. that he lives in now, no. right? Well, no. They all like live in like Z City and stuff right, like that, okay. you know, all that type of stuff. But um, he's got to be like, it's gonna be like Boston or some... <laughs> Chicago or some shit like that. Some Boston's funny. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta have an S thing. Unless it's like uh, based in New York type thing, right? Or it's one of those ones. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that would be really, really interesting though. Mm-hmm. It's really ambitious, did. but super ambitious. Also. People will. I'm up for whatever. Just because, like, what? L- look where it started. For who's directing it? I forget, man. Well, get Stephen Chow, right? Yeah, we could, could do, do it. Right? Yeah. You could do it. Or Snyder. I still think I still kind of think uh, Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright's great. <laughs> Edgar Wright. I, I think the, I think the Wachowskis Andy could probably Sam- do it. Wachowskis. I don't know how they handle humor though. Who knows? But. But I know Edgar Wright can handle humor. Yeah, that's and true. And he can handle action. He can. That's true. true. <laughs> um, Edgar Wright would be great. I don't care though. Like even if they get a new cast, if they get two unknowns, excellent. Even better for me. Yeah. Even better because that's all I'll know him as. It's true, but. No, nah, I don't care. I, you know, not I attaching. Think Andy Samberg, Saitama. That's to me. That's the Zac best. Zac Efron, Jenna. 
<laughs> That's hilarious. It's got to be. That is hilarious. It's got to be. But it makes sense, too. It, it's perfect. It makes sense, because Genos is supposed to be like... Yeah, and he'll he'll look badass and yeah. then fail every time, and then Andy Samberg with his <laughs> dumb face will come through and ruin him. And we want to hit. Come on, tell me that's not perfect. I would pay to watch this. <sighs> I'm excited for something that bad. doesn't exist. I wish I could get Oh, dude, and, the, Andy and the bloody... People. The writing. It did Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Edgar Wright's writing is on point. And I'm sure Sandberg would participate. Absolutely, yeah. And if, like, the guys from Lowly Island are also cut right in the film as well. Why not? Make them play oh, with some goodness. of the other heroes. Yorma could be the <sighs> dude that rides the bike. Oh, that would be the fucking greatest. <laughs> if Yorma's <laughs> lice... Oh, that's fucking awesome. Right? That is awesome, dude. I want it. I want it to happen. That is awesome. I wish I could get in touch with him and be like hey man you should jump on this before anybody else jumps on this do the music for it too fuck yeah why not that be so good why not what as well what they, as they well they should get the actual band to do the US version of that song or that American uh, or the English that's wicked just get the same band and uh and he said we could wear this skin, the cap the skin cap yeah. you think he would skin cap it or he would actually change he'd probably skin like? cap it At, for, for the video clip for the song oh, yeah yeah yeah. But then it's like, hey, that actually works. Wanna, That's legit, dude. So bad. That's legit. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do it like now, though. Oh, yeah, they gotta jump on it soon. So, yeah, that's it for uh, movie news as well. Okay, so we're gonna jump into. We're gonna continue. I guess 20 more movies. 20 more movies. We're continuing the list of do 100 we do movies. Do every time, or you just wanna do one? Yeah, let's just do one. So, this is our. I guess not necessarily top ten, but ten that we think these we are ten. Watch. We, yeah, we should. Yeah, basically that's it. Uh, if you've not already watched, well, these are the ones for us, anyways. Where it's like these are the ones where if these were showing, right. I'd watch all of these ten. Definitely. Uh, first one we got on the list: Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah, I love this movie. I really like it. Michelle Gondry. Oh yeah, he's the oh, dude. I think it's his best. If he directed movie so far. a film. A comic book movie. I think he would have been good for Doctor Strange. I think he would have That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I think he would have been cool for that. Oh, But goodness. I'm glad they got the guy they got so far oh, yeah, because yeah, of yeah. the Scott look. Scott Derrickson? Yeah, because yeah, of the look. I don't right. know. I don't, I don't know, know that Gondry Gondry's would look would have been. His one cool. would be so bloody sick, though. Yeah. He'd be oh. Great. But yeah, like, since he can't do that, what would you get Michelle Gondry to do? Um, I know it's like off the cuff, but. Freakazoid. Oh, shit. <laughs> Because he can do some weird shit with Freakazoid's abilities. His abilities, yes. The whole, the visual. Oh goodness, that's so that's so arty and so like I, get, <laughs> I didn't even expect this. I thought they'd just go fucking ham on it. I don't know, man. I imagine it would not be a super big budget if they. Oh yeah, definitely no, no. And I'm like, who could pull off some practical weird shit? Michelle Gondry, Gondry right? And his camera tricks. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting. It'd be really interesting. I would be curious to see. Yeah. I never even saw a fucking uh, Green Hornet, so I have no idea what hit, how... What, Did how he his... direct that? Yeah, yeah. Michelle Gondry directed Green Hornet. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> my least favorite part of that was... The director? Was Rogan. Oh, it was Rogan, really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know... It's it not was, what I... It was his property to I get it. I, I, uh, right, right. But I like the film. All right. Uh, he was actually my least favorite. Even part. skinnied up or whatever that, he did to it's himself. Not, it's not about that. It's just because I've seen him in too many other roles where it's too specific. Where he's the stoner W. Right. right. And then this, you're still kind of that at the you know start, and then you clean up. It's like, it's just, it's too disconnected already. Right. It, he's not, he doesn't have the action hero thing. Well, he's not as versatile as... He's not a Chris Pratt. He didn't, Chris he didn't Pratt. clean up into that, no. basically. <laughs> that, like, yeah, that one was the if surprise scene. If it was Chris scene. Pratt playing that Green Hornet role right. the same, right. do you think it would have worked better as a movie? <sighs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I haven't watched it. Automatically, dude. <laughs> but I saw in the trailer there's some shit like... Yes, oh, Kato good. Kato kicks a guy and it, like, kaleidoscopes. Yeah, yeah, it's... That, see, that shit? That was gone. Fucking sick. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's bizarre, man. Him doing... Yeah, I don't know. So now that you know that he did it, does it change your opinion on how he would handle Freakazoid? Yeah, it's still... Oh, it, not really, because... You know, yeah. But the thing with Freakazoid is he's so... 
I guess he's weird. You mm. know how they... Who directed The Mask? I don't know. Because that was basically like Freakazoid without the internet. Yeah. So Freakazoid <laughs> would be way more crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> shared knowledge essentially right. and everything of the internet Why he'd not? be i'm like i'm surprised dc doesn't just pull that out Why not? like i'm gonna do freakazoid movies I'm like why surpri- because just... he's deadpool he Maybe. was deadpool I'm kind of more surprised they just haven't done a new series right i don't know if they want to touch it it's but it's so niche or at least know. put him into something other right dc stuff. all of a sudden you just see him pop, popping in the backgrounds all right like people are just dc just inserting freakazoid into the background of things I wonder, and then it'll eventually start like people will start noticing like they'll get the buzz like oh did you notice that like was that freaking like this panel and stuff like that you need a character like that to what pop up in everything that I draw yeah that's weird and also difficult um so yeah eternal sunshine is eternal what we're sunshine, talking about yeah. Gondry. <laughs> that movie, though. I love that movie it's I think yeah. it's one of Jim Carrey's best yes I, um. I think that it's one of uh, Kirsten Dunst's best. Was it Kirsten Dunst? Wasn't it? Yeah. Isn't she the girl that works at the... uh... Kirsten Dunst? I'm pretty sure. Who else would it have been? (laughs) In Eternal Sunshine? Yeah. The chick that comes over and she's like hanging out with Mark Ruffalo and uh, Seth Green or whatever. Was that Dunst? I think so. Who was the main girl in Eternal Sunshine? Uh, Kate Blanchett, right? Or one of them, Kate's. I thought it was. I thought it was an. Edit it out. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. It's the lady that in was Titanic. Yeah, what's her name? Not. I don't know. It's not Kate Blanchett. No, Blanchett's not that. Kate Winslet. Wait, this is Kate. Okay. And I always mix up Kate Winslet and, and Kate Blanchett. Blanchett. Yeah. The name of it. The it. Yeah. Because they basically look the same, too. She's just like a younger version. She's she, got a round, she's a rounder version. She's the one that's in The Holiday. And I said Kate Blanchett when we were talking about it last time. Oh, sorry, Kate. Wait, what were we looking for? To see who was in it. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Oh. I thought we figured it. No, you said... You Winslet. didn't know who the girl was. Yeah, Kristen Dunst. She okay. plays Mary. And she hangs out with... I don't think it was Seth Green. I don't know why I said Seth Green. Is he Seth Green in that one? No, it's Elijah Wood and Mark Ruffalo. Right? I don't know. Who the fuck runs the thing with him? Because I know Mark Ruffalo runs the, the brain device, the dream thing. I need to watch that film again, dude. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the case for almost all the movies we put on this list, and yeah. we're trying to talk about it. No, it's good, though, because as we talk about it, we remember things that we didn't think about. Yeah, yeah it was Elijah Wood and Mark Ruffalo that run the time machine oh, thing. Need to watch that. And then Kristen Dunst comes over, yeah. and they start smoking weed. Oh. To Jim Carrey's, like, passed out by. I remember it now. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was random. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's, I don't know, smoothly transition back into That's that. fine. I'll find the thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so Eternal Sunshine's got a lot of great mm-hmm. fucking actors in it. That film, it's just, it's like, the top, the two, those two top actors, the main actors, two of their top, this is the, one of their top films right. from each of those. Yeah. And Easily. Michelle Gondry as well. I yeah, think he's... it's his best directed thing so far. That, so I mean, far, other than the... maybe some of his bananas music videos. Mm, but we really. Um, but for movies, I think yeah. it's his best thing. He didn't get a lot of opportunity, though, no, not from yet. what I saw. But yeah, he's a crazy director. If you haven't seen his music videos, you should look them up. Mm. Next on the list, we got Coming to America. Eddie Murphy's best, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I know it's. People might think, but that's a comedy. It's like yes, it is. It's a romantic comedy. It's a romantic comedy, but to me, it it it's stronger as a romance. Um, Even though the comedy is amazing, isn't it? to me, it was a. This is fantastic. It's more just that it was a comedy with yeah. a romantic plot, mm-hmm. and that's um, enough. Yeah, of coming to America to find your wife, yep. basically. So, and and it's I think one of the most quotable movies I've oh, ever I love seen. It, yeah. Uh, Great music. The music. The casting. Just Great the casting. Cast. Everyone was on point. Everyone was... They were, they were giving it their all, in a sense. So many iconic yeah. things from it. 
They even use James Earl Jones, exactly. and uh, I can't remember the lady that plays his mom. Yeah. But they're the two actors that play Simba's parents. Simba's parents. <laughs> in, That's uh, amazing. In to Lion me. King, that yeah. is amazing because they me. were so iconic. They use the same people, uh, which is a little bit ironic because he had a dead lion on his arm and coming to the wearing him, man. He was wearing Mufasa's mm-hmm. corpse. Um, it all makes sense. But yeah, that movie's great. Arsenio Hall's great in it. Ah, he's excellent, man. Yeah, and Eddie Murphy plays like a thousand fucking and characters. And he's excellent. And, and he's great all as all of them. Yeah. They're all living people. Yeah. You know what? As a kid, after, obviously, I realized after, it's like, oh yeah, that's actually Eddie Murphy. As I'm watching, I was so engrossed in it. I'm like, they're just whoever they are. I didn't know until I was a teenager that he played the little oh, Jewish guy. Right, that one was the... Oh, crazy. Yeah, that blew my mind. Because I'm like, no, 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 there is no way. The yeah. But there is no way he looked like that. Right. But it was that guy. That guy existed. Right. That guy was alive. All of them were alive, yeah. though. He all played them, them all to perfection. I and the like. old Arsenio? Right. <laughs> that guy is a real person. All right. <laughs> I thought it was a trash. <laughs> yeah, that guy's so good. Plus, uh, A. Murphy, oh, I think he, he sells so all those other yeah. characters because... The Akeem character is so like charmingly uh, innocent, but he's great as that. He's great. Like at it. he plays it fantastic. Like again, that's a character to me where I'm like, all right, Eddie Murphy, he's a great actor. He has a lot of characters in all of his films, but that actual character to me is isn't just a person, somebody that exists out right. there. You know, that's that's a really he was he's able so to genuine. play it in a way, Sen- genuine. W- yeah, where he could be innocent mm-hmm. and charming, mm-hmm. still. After you see him in the very beginning getting his penis uh, cleaned, yep, yep, <laughs> his penis cleaned and his butt wiped for him, yep. and all this stuff, yep. and you're like, yeah, sure, yep. You, he you seems to... like a good dude, right? <laughs> you can that. like that's crazy, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Where they show you that side first, right? And then they expect you, the viewer, to actually fall over with these characters. I kind of hope somebody in this uh, podcast has not seen the movie yet. Yeah. And are very intrigued by the idea of someone getting their penis cleaned and without context. They're yeah. like, what does that mean? They showed him getting uh, his penis cleaned. You'll have to watch to find out. And it's hilarious. And if you haven't seen it already. If you haven't listened to Ludacris' yet, uh, uh-huh. Coming to America trip. But these 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 films that we're listing, yeah. films that we enjoy. And like, if you haven't seen it, and if you're still listening, obviously, then right. maybe similar sense of humor? I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully, then... Give these films a shot if you haven't seen them already. Um, next one up on the list if it is kind of spoiled already if you're a old school 34A comic strip uh, reader, mm. which is probably <laughs> describing like four people that read this maybe. Well, or I don't know, this. man. I don't maybe know. Maybe not many. Maybe not many. That's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> like ones that we don't know personally? Probably yeah. not many. Um, but one of the, uh, the first one we ever did was about Jeff and I watching Clueless yeah. while Kanoi was at work. And Clueless is the next one on our list. Yeah. This movie is a great chunk of the 90s. Just it like is. we talked about. It uh, is, dude. Did we talk about this one last week? Yeah, we talked about comedies, right? Mm. Yeah, Encino Man. Right. Just like Encino Man is an amazing slice of the 90s, Yeah. Clueless is also. Yeah. Love Clueless, man. Great, great movie. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's excellent, dude. Batgirl. Yes. And the... <laughs> But they existed as those two characters. Right, Stacey Dash, she's still right. around for some reason, mm. uh, and still looks the same. Mm-hmm. She, her character was great. I was, I couldn't be convinced that she was as old as she was at that point. Right. <laughs> like if someone told me the the actual actors' ages, right? Because I, to me, those those actors and those characters were yeah. new to me because I don't really I didn't really watch a lot of television back then either. So mm-hmm. I didn't really like was. Uh, the 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 lead, the female lead. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Uh, Alicia Silverstone. Alicia Silverstone. Was she in a show during that time that was really popular? No, I don't think so. Did she, was she in any popular film before that? Prior to that? Uh, cr- the Crush. Okay, see, I'm, I that don't was know like that. a horror right. movie. See, so um, these characters when they popped on the screen, or something. Yeah, I just knew them as these characters. Yeah, she you know? did. She did like horror movies. Oh, okay, shit, see, like early. No. Late eighties. She did one with Carrie Elwes or whatever. Carrie, oh, okay. We got the yeah. Robin Hood many right, times. Right. He was the male lead in the movie The Crush, where she played like a fifteen year old girl that got became obsessed with her next door neighbor. Is this a horror movie? It's like yeah, basically thriller type. Thriller type. Oh, 
because she becomes obsessed with him and she's like the Lolita type girl. She's very young. Obviously. She's too young. Yeah, yeah. And she's always flirting with him and he's always like, leave me alone. Like, you're you're weird. He's like, but he's like, am I becoming into this because she's way the fuck into this? And he's like, no, I definitely, like, I, I like looking at her, but I don't want to do anything or whatever. But then it just gets weirder and weirder. She's like, screaming at him like you have to be with me where are they supposed to be together and it's so weird because i'd seen that movie after right at like almost right oh. after seeing clueless and i was like what the fuck that would have like no what yeah, it was so weird it was so weird <laughs> that is bizarre. and because that dude carrie elwes yeah, yeah he's robin hood to me exactly dude that's him <laughs> he's robin hood. Mm -hmm. if they put all the actors who have played robin hood and you gotta pick one that's Robin Hood. Carrie Elwes is by Robin Hood. Oh yeah, yeah. In any film, and like in any is, version. And that is that. And that makes that film automatically great. It's freaking. Yeah. Um. Next up on the list, the wedding singer. Dude, this was hands down. We both agreed needed yeah. to be on. This is on the list. Is if anything, this one might be like top one like for me. The one. Yeah. For for in this category, yeah, this is my the one. In this uh, category, for sure. I think coming to America is mine. But... That one is so close, but. <laughs> but... Because Wedding a Singer would be immediately after it. Yeah. Like, and be like, can I watch these at the same time? Right. One, like, uh, Wedding Singer's butt cheek is kind of on coming to America's <laughs> chair. Like, they're sitting too close yeah. on the bus. That kind of situation. They're sharing a seat. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I love Wedding oh, Singer. Oh, it's Adam Sandler. Great it's, 80s. Yep. That one's not even made in the 80s. I know. But that's a chunk of the 80s. Which is well. so weird. Like, to me, I'm like, wait a second. That film isn't made in the 80s. Because okay. when when I look back in my memory, it's almost like I have an automatic filter that goes yeah, over right. what I'm seeing or what I'm remembering. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh no, things from the 80s, 80s filter. Right. Things from the 70s, 70s filter. When I think of Wedding Singer, it already puts the 80s filter on it. So I'm like, oh shit, that's right. It's not that. No. It, it's a it, reason. To me, oh. the reason I always can tell is because there's so much emphasis on the shit they're making fun of right, from right. the 80s. Mm -hmm. The hair, right, the and the glove, <laughs> the glove and the jacket and shit, and uh, uh, the cast of that is great. I think it's the best use of all his friends all that want to be in yes. shit. Yes. This is where they were mm -hmm. used the best. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Buscemi is great. Steve Buscemi is bloody awesome. He's brilliant. John Lovitz is amazing. I don't even really give a shit about John no, no. Lovitz, but yeah, no, that's yeah. like his my this, favorite yeah. one of his. Yeah, and he's only got like two little scenes. Yeah, and they are my favorite. Um, he's going. <laughs> yeah, he's losing his mind, and I'm nice. reaping the benefits. Um, uh, he's so good. Wedding singer, love it. Uh, soundtrack yeah. is so good. Soundtrack is perfect. It's the guy perfect. who plays Glenn Gulia, yeah, he's Glenn, brilliantly he's used. Yeah, he's perfect. Yeah. You know, like they cast certain dudes to like you're playing the douchebag dude. Mm -hmm. That guy played it so well. That in anything I see him in now, he's that he's a dick to me. I forgot he was in he was the dad in Baby's Day Out. I don't even fucking I know That's what that is, yeah. but I don't know. I was for only sure recently that reminded of that film. <laughs> Baby's now, Day Out. That's the thing. I remember watching Baby's Day Out first, though, obviously. <laughs> I watched it as a kid. Okay. Right. Uh, but then I watched that wedding scene, and I was like, No, this is How him. How old were we when Baby's Day Out came oh. out? Because you, I would hope that it's real, real early. Because I don't know. If you were a teenager when Baby's Day Out came out, you have no excuse to have seen it. Why? <laughs> because it's Baby's fucking Day It's out. hilarious. <laughs> As a kid, I remember. <laughs> uh, I haven't watched it again. Oh, Baby's Day Out. Got what year? I can't find it. I'm including this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, dude. I like it. That was cool. Baby's Day Out. Where it's the... hilarious that film. It's so dumb. <laughs> Baby's Day Out. 1994. Yeah. So grade. you were like was nine 10. or something. Yeah. I was okay. turning, you I turned no 10. I was saying, Nick, if you were 16, oh, you had no reason to go. <laughs> 10 is almost that six years away, <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. We didn't know. Dude. That's why uh, we looked it up. Did you, uh, For a second, I thought I was still on Baby's Day Out. And I was like, oh shit, Michelle Gondry directed Baby's Day Out? <laughs> no way. Uh, could you imagine that version oh, of that? I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Um, next up, we got. Let's try it. Next up, we got the holiday. This Great is, movie. This uh. is also Kate Winslet, not Kate Blanchett. Yeah. Winslet, uh, Jude Law, Jude Law, Cameron Diaz, Cameron Diaz, and Jack Black, Jack Black. Is that it? 
Who's the primary? Who's the guy ones? that plays the not good guy that Kate Winslet is dating in the beginning of the movie? Oh, I forgot. He's another mm. name actor, but I can't think of his name now. He did the another job. British guy. Yeah, he did the job. He was fine. Yeah. Uh, I like this movie quite a bit, actually. I do. And I it do. gives like a cool look at Hollywood in a way because it does. it's about Hollywood. Uh, and part of it is anyway, like Jack Black, I think, writes music for trailers or something. And uh, uh, there's like an old dude who's an old screenwriter, uh, Hollywood screenwriter. <laughs> they have an old screenwriter, though. He's pretty great in that movie. Mm. Uh, great locales. Oh. The, the little house that Cameron Diaz stays in when she goes to the UK. Because the premise of the movie is that they uh, swap houses, yeah. basically. The British chick and the chick from L.A. swap houses because both of their relationships Wait, is, thought, just like, went to shit. Isn't Cameron Diaz's job to edit the actual trailers? And um, Jack Black was the music guy right. who used to put the music on those trailers. Mm, that's what I said. That's how they know each other, right? I don't, I yes, don't, remember, if, that's if, how he goes, I don't yeah. remember if she actually edits them or she just owns the company that edits them. One of those I don't two. remember seeing her yeah, yeah. One, anyway, one of those two. But I two. remember her approving it. Right, right, right. So, yeah, one of those two. But um, either way, yeah, uh, it's a cool look at it. Yeah, and it's interesting. I enjoyed. I think Jack Black's one of his most subtle performance, maybe ever. I like it, dude. And I love. I related. I to like him it. So yeah, much. like automatically he became like oh, and I'm sure like this is, for all we know, the other one's closer to who he really is, and that's fine. It's just a high energy person. But this one felt more like someone that you'd know. In the interviews I've seen of him, right. where he's not on, he seems more like that character. Awesome. So that makes sense to me. He seems like a genuine dude. Like, but yeah, that character because it's and it's weird because it's like, oh yeah, a leading man. You don't you don't think Jack Black. Plus, I've loved that dude since the Airborne. Days. Right. So you know, I'm an Airborne dude, a guy, an Airborne type of dude. Inline skates, bro. Inline skates and like Kanoi, if she was here, she would say Brink is the best, and to her, I would oh. say. Go fuck yourself. I'd say Brink is it. No, nope, shut your no, 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 no. mouth. Listen, it's, it's not a Dis- bad. It's a Disney movie. I know, still. but it's not bad. But do they have a guru surfer kid? Of course not. That's what I'm saying, man. You can't beat it. it it's got replacement Johnny Cage in it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Automatically. It's got replacement Johnny Cage in it. Oh, it's shit. got Seth Green. Right. With the long hair Seth oh, Green. Oh, shit, right. And Jack Black as the, like... Shitty bully, shitty kid. bully kid, right? And he was annoying. Yeah, he was. Wasn't Jack Black was also annoying. the shitty bully kid in Neverending Story three? I know he's in that movie, but I couldn't tell you what the fuck he played. I only remember. I the think first he two. might have been the shitty. In, was yeah. Neverending Story three? Was that like a direct to VHS? I think, that, I think that hit. Remember, it might have been the VHSs. Cinema. Yeah, VHS. You old bitch. Right, I was going to say Betamax, day. and I'm like, nah. <laughs> My got, grandma had a Betamax. I, I had a Betamax. One. I didn't have one. We bought one in old school. Well, you know. That's how gangsters cool. roll. That's how gangsters roll. Next thing. Definitely Maybe. This film was good. Uh, it's, uh, I think, very underrated uh, Ryan Reynolds movie. Very. He's believable, even, you know, when he, he's not the type of actor to look like an everyday Joe. Right. He was believable. It's because he's not walking around with his fucking shirt off and right. rippling abs and shit like that. I'm sure there were scenes. It's got Ilsa Fisher in it. Yeah. She's made. I have such a crush on her. Yeah, she's, she's like dumb. my celebrity crush. And, she's but, and the her. day I heard about Sasha Baron Cohen, cried a little bit in my heart. It's sad. In it's my weird. Heart. I'm like, come on. There's another hey. one wasted? When this is the, like when Kristen Bell like... and Dax Shepard. Oh. <laughs> come on. Hey, Who man. The fuck wrote Good that? on him, though. Who wrote that shit? <laughs> Those guys need to be fired. And yeah, need to be replace those writers immediately. Yeah. They've gotten it wrong. I put my name in. I put my name in the hat. They were like, Kristen Bell's looking. Who's she going to date? I was like, me. And they were like, <laughs> but Dax. And I was like, God, you know what? He's already a star. It's like, make me. I am a star. Yeah. And that's why. Um, Ten Things I Hate About You. Or something this like. man. This movie is, is also the 90s. Why is 10 Things great to you? Because it's fucking awesome. What makes it one of the 10 that they have to see? Everything. <laughs> For example. The cast is brilliant. Who in the cast is great? Heath Ledger's cool. Heath Ledger's cool. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's cool. Does, he has his accent in that, yeah? He's the Aussie still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you get to see these actors play characters who are you'd never really see in that 
time. It's great setting. Setting. Oh, dude, where was it filmed? I don't know is where it, Washington? All of it it's was in... filmed, but it's set in Seattle. That is legit. They have that paintball thing mm-hmm. they have happens at Gasworks Park down here. Does it still where... happen? It's not. It, there's not. There never been a paintball thing. Oh, that's where everybody watches the fireworks, though. Ah, oh, right? cool. But great to see it there. It looks great. Uh, what's the Alex Mack is in it? Yeah, dude. She doesn't turn into a Capri Sun, but she's, she's pretty great in that movie. Yeah, as she's a great. Snotty little brat. Right, she played it great. I love that movie, dude. Julie uh, Stiles. It's got uh, Santa's right hand man, little helper guy with the the juice. Oh yeah, dude. Marks. <laughs> What's his name? David Crumholtz. <laughs> <laughs> why do I know that name? I don't want a full random name. I don't know. I don't know why you know it, but I love it. Elsa, David. Alex Mack, Larissa Olenek, or something Nick, like why that. How the fuck do you know that name? You're full of shit. I don't know, dude. I'm just remembering now. I could tell I could tell you the that they used Sly and the Family Stone everyday people at the beginning of Definitely Maybe as the opening theme credits. Couldn't tell you who the fuck Alex Mack's name is. Well, I, I kept all my m- movie music. Yeah. I kept all of it. I don't yeah. know how the fuck you're pulling these names out. Oh, I don't know. It's just in the deep, deep. It's like, wink. That and, was its last life. Who plays, well, who's the, the actress that plays her friend that loves the Shakespeare? If you know that girl's name. Oh, I don't know that one. Okay, I was going to no. say, because she didn't show up in anything else. So if you um, know her. No, she was in, uh, fucking, what, what was that other ballet movie? Center stage. She was in center stage with uh, Nadiri. Yeah, <laughs> with fucking. Oh shit, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that shit. <laughs> that's tight. You know why? Because I love that. I movie. do center stage. It's the, fucking the dope. Dude, the soundtrack from dancing yeah, to dude. Red Hot Chili Peppers oh. cover of the uh, uh, Stevie Wonder song. Mm. What's the Stevie Wonder song? Uh, damn it! Come on, you know what it is. No, I don't. What's the name of that song? I don't know. Higher ground, motherfucker. That's the name of that song. Higher Ground. It's the same one from Power Rangers. Oh! <laughs> is it? Yep. Weird. Uh, but yeah, 10 things. The setting is excellent. I like. I, I don't think the I've seen. I on this episode. This is who cares? Who cares? I love them. I who love cares? Them. I don't think there'd been another like high school centric film right. that I'd watch. I don't know. Maybe. I'm sure they made a lot of high school type films. Between 2000 and 2010, oh, yeah. but I, I don't think I even watched a lot of them. No, like by the time Project X and that kind of right. shit come out, I didn't give a fuck. Like to me, if you were like, which one's better, Project X or 10 Things I Hate About You? I'm like, yeah. why is that even in the same category? It's like, well, because they're teenage movies, and I'm like, no, <laughs> just no, no, unacceptable. That's not you can't even say that. Um, it's Julia Stiles is yeah. in this one. Great in it. She's pretty good at it. She put. I mean, it's supposed to be like a remake of uh, Taming of the Shrew, right? A modernization, which is cool to me. It is very cool. I wish they did more of get the, over that it. kind of thing. Get over it was around the same time. I like though. it. Like over literally too. the next day. I kind of like, like get hey, over. What are you doing, Cisco and Ben Foster? Yeah, but I was like, I hey, like that didn't movie. Make it on the list. It didn't because it. it if you I, know why? Again, we do the cinema system. Cisco and Ben Foster. We do the cinema system though, right? Where it's like two movies. Like, would you watch? Out of these two films, is it better than any of these ones? Like, if Ten Things oh. and and Get Over It are playing, ten fucking like Ten Things, of course. <laughs> that okay. one's dumb. That's why I was like, no, it's similar to that, but it's not better. What about our next one? Can't hardly wait. That's more of a simple. That's it more is. of a similar storyline. It is. So which one? If they're playing at the same time, you go Can't Hardly Wait. You go Get Over It. Can't hardly wait. Yeah. You know yeah. What? That's why I made on the yeah. list, motherfucker. That's can't why. Can't hardly wait is the next movie. Yeah. Another one. Great cast. Right, Starting to notice a, tr- a little bit of a trend. Seth Green's in this one as the uh, white kid that dresses mm-hmm. hip hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, he's is he the trend character? Huh? Why? What else did he do? So he was also in. Oh, he wasn't even in that movie. We we're just talking about him. Never yep. mind. Hey, <laughs> it's a trend of thoughts I've had. Yes. <laughs> trend of thoughts. It's not a train of thoughts. It's a trend uh, of thoughts. Uh, yeah, man. It's my next series. Can't Hardly Wait is awesome. It's got the little kid from Hook. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. That's the they go up in the roof. Yeah. <laughs> but then they don't and then do he, it. And he, he sings Sweet Child of he Mine does. while he's uh, drunk. After oh, that's drunk great. For the first time. This is a great movie, he dude. Was, he was great in this that movie. This was a great movie. And then he left to go uh, be like super smart and go to MIT and like yep. become a professor or something yep. like that. And now he's, he's that. Cool, yeah. Now he's a professor. 
So good for him. But yeah, that's why this movie made it. He looked like baby Bill Gates even as a kid, so... That's the best. That's how the cookie turns into Bill Gates. What was the last one? Last one was Can't Hardly Wait. Can't Hardly Wait. Uh, what's the main character from Can't Hardly Wait? The actor? Yeah, the actor's name. Ooh, I don't know. He was also in Empire Records. Right, right. He was also in That Thing You Do. Was he? Yes. I don't remember that movie very well. I like that movie, but it didn't make it on this list. It did not. Nope. Do you feel like it should have? Nah. <laughs> if there was uh, anything to, to go on, it'd be on music. Yeah. But we'll find out next time when you we do music. That, you love that doo wop I do. That, doo -wop, the music is very doo -wop, cool doo -wop, and fun. Ding dong. I kind of ended up hating it because I was in band when that movie came out. Um, and they made us play all the songs from that all the time. And the so popular you have songs to, only? So you have to hear eighth graders shittily play that music. Uh, yeah, that would ruin it. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just imagine that. And, and I'm like, <laughs> if you heard one of your favorite albums... Just constantly, shittily played by yeah, eight, eight just shittily played for whatever hours that you, you're in that Band class. Is like an hour probably, or a half hour, 45 minutes or something like that. All right, next one up, Cruel Intentions. This movie wasn't that big a deal for you as a... Not, not you know, as big. I think I didn't watch it the first time it came out. Right. I watched it a little bit later. I think I rent. I didn't see it in the theater Oh, for no, sure. no, 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 no. It was I a think, rental for sure. Yeah, I think I rented it. Um, I don't know, maybe it might have even been television, like, like on first, television? first like television premiere, because right. they do that still. Right. They used, I remember back in the, I when I was a kid. That. Yeah, I loved that. Yeah, I loved when they would put yeah, a new movie when on it's HBO like, or something. Oh, see, because we didn't have cable, so it's just whatever the network oh, channel on actual network, network TV. Yeah, network television. I remember. I mean, because cable would, wasn't very common. When they would first go to HBO as a kid, that was a big deal for me, because okay. when I was little, we had cable. That's I didn't have. I don't even have cable now. Yeah, but <laughs> that's why we don't watch as much television. Right, but when I was a kid, I had it because my dad always wanted HBO. That's cool. But whenever they would premiere a new movie, that was a big deal. Mm. Even on regular TV, I would Dude, get excited like, when yeah. like a comic book movie would Some, make it to anything. TV. I was like, yeah, fucking Spider Man's on television. To me, television anything now. like uh, like especially films that I'd missed out right. in the cinema mm. and just never really thought about looking on. Yeah. Uh, rental like VHS at that time. Right. VHS rental. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, that was a thing. But yeah, Cruel Intentions. Cruel Intentions wasn't that, like, because I watched it after it was, you know, right. the hype behind it. Well, for me, I watched it later, but I think I watched it when it was out on, like, DVD mm. and DVD first came out or some shit like that. And, uh, and I loved it as a kid. It oh. was like, it was perfect to me. Really? Because I thought... You couldn't get any fucking cooler than Ryan Philippe in that movie. Right, he was... Because in my head, like, w when I was a kid, obviously it didn't work out the way I thought it did. But I was like, I want to dress like that everywhere as well. Because he's in, like, designer suits, yeah. like, three-piece suits almost throughout that whole movie. He's Sorry, dressed dude. like a pimp. You didn't think about how much money it would cost. No, oh, no, definitely not. I didn't know any of that. I was just like, that's... He chose... When he went to the, to the clothing store... He chose fancy clothes. Yeah, I want. He's like, which? So what's your section? Is that fancy? Cool. I'll take. Right. I'll take, I'll take those. the fancy clothes. I'll take those. And I was like, I'm gonna be so tight. I'm gonna be dressed like a businessman at school. And I started carrying like a briefcase around. Yeah, that's so thug. I think the briefcase was actually before that movie. What but, did you uh, keep in in your briefcase? All my drawing stuff. Oh, dude, that's legit though, because that's the important shit. Yep, yeah, all my drawing stuff, and it stayed in there for a long time. I think the first, my first attempt at a comic book, is it was in that briefcase. Was stapled together notebook paper. That is legit. <laughs> this is so legit, man. Yeah. Uh, but it's anyway, episode. Cruel Intentions. Uh, I watched at the perfect time to be just emo enough to love all the like over dramatized love. See, that's why to me, I'm okay with this on the list because of all the films that are similar to that supposed to to what to what Cruel Intentions is. Right. Cruel Intentions is the best of that kind. I don't even think there are what other movies That's are like why cuz nothing. Because it like was it. one of the only things I could think of where it was all set it was all teenagers, it was all supposed to be like set in high school, but the that's uh, not the way teenagers look. No, but they were all like super fancy and super sexualized and sexualizing each other. That was bananas. Because yeah, me. sexualizing teenagers, sexualizing yeah, is yeah, I, that was crazy to me. That's and also why... a remake. It's a remake of Dangerous Liaisons. I don't know. I didn't know that. Uh, Did but, you watch that? Uh, I didn't because it was like it's like wigs and shit and weird. It's old timey wigs. Yeah. 
What Isn't there wigs and shit? Uh, no. What do you mean? It's by like old motherfuckers timer? with frilly shirts on and stuff. Oh, is it? I think so. Oh yeah. no, nah, nah, I'm okay. Uh, but it's a remake of that, but said it's like modernized teenagers who are super fans because it was all like wealthy people and dangerous liaisons. They weren't teenagers, right? So right. All, like, wealthy people. That's why they had to put him in this uh, setting where it's like a, a high class school. Right. But it was like it was crazy to me. I'd never seen anything like that. Mm. This Selma Blair and fucking uh, dude, it's fucking right. Selma Blair's <laughs> yeah, she's Hel- the other girl. Hellboy's girlfriend makes out with Daphne from Scooby Doo, and uh, like uh, when they when they stop kissing, there's like a big long spit string <coughs> from one mouth to the other mouth. And that was like, oh, they're allowed to do this, and, right? That was crazy. Is this allowed? It's got the I think the kid from Save the Last Dance is in it as uh, Selma Blair's guy she likes. That's right. <laughs> is it? I don't know his name, but I, I don't know. His but name. Uh, no, no. I'm pretty sure he was the one that Selma Blair was into. But they weren't supposed to date because she's a rich white girl and he's a black kid from the inner city that teaches her cello or some shit like that. And. Uh, Wow, you know a lot more about this. I've seen this movie idea. like a hundred uh, kabillion yeah, yeah, fucking see, times. Um, that's why. This is this is one of those films that haven't yet made that many views. Right, and they, they've uh, they've made a bunch of like shitty sequels. I've not Did seen. They? I've not seen any of them. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'd be curious. They, I think the second one is a prequel, still featuring. I don't want the guy that died. I'd in the rather first not. Movie. Yeah, and it's not it's not any of the any others. Of the that's why I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather watch something that's a sequel that doesn't a involve, proper sequel. Yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. It's got uh, Sweet Home Alabama. What's her fucking name? Walk the line. What's her name? Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon <laughs> as the yeah, the I love, <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's a great <laughs> reference. I walk the line. I know that the Johnny Cash film. It's like she's not even in the. She's not even the name of the film, but I know what you're talking about. I don't know why that. So yeah, well, that movie, was good because I, I like that film. <laughs> it's a good. I don't know. You could have said Legally Blonde, probably. I could have, and that yeah. would have been even more poignant, I imagine. Yeah. What else did she start? <laughs> All right, that's not. That's a tangent. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, she she's in that movie as the like innocent girl that yeah. they're trying to corrupt. That's like looking- Right. <laughs> this movie is comedy when I think about it now. I want to watch it again. It's another movie with a great yeah. soundtrack. Yes, the soundtrack was great. Um, I think it was filmed well. Like, from filmed, my memory. It was filmed great. From my memory, it was, it was filmed, filmed well. Great. It's got great emo music. Like, it's Counting very... Crows, I think, is on the soundtrack. <laughs> Counting Crows. Yeah. It's the only time you'll hear them from us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. They're on that soundtrack, and they're pretty good. A whole bunch of, whole bunch of great... 90s emo but that's a very nice again and like a lot of these films are probably 90s i don't know if that was 90s or like right on the on millennium the, on the, on the millennium maybe might have just touched yeah. it i don't know maybe uh but that one yeah that's another one with a great small little cast uh selma blair we talked we mentioned her earlier but she's great in that movie she plays like a ditzy rich kid like she's dumb yeah, as it's rocks so great and like uh, because Again, she started in another film with Reese Witherspoon, which is which one? Legally Blonde. She was, was the Selma rich. Blair yeah, there? she was the rich one there. She was a rich, but like a strict one. That's why it's so bizarre that she was in that similar film, like a similar, same cast almost, like another right. castmate from that film, mm-hmm. but a completely different character. As did right. she, though. As did, you know, uh, Legally Blonde. What's yeah. it? Now? Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> Sweet old Alabama. Sweet old Alabama. <laughs> A great one. <laughs> great reference. Um, that's not on a list either, so that's no, what's funny. No, I don't think I would put that on. No, list. it doesn't work. Um, next one up is Wally. I put it there, man. Oh, this is this might be. Yep, it's technically it's the, the last, last one, but we yep. can mention the two. Oh, of course, mentions. Um, Wally. Ah, uh, I love it. It's a great movie. There's no film like it's it. It's a beautiful movie. Yeah, I can't think of another film that I I can even compare it to in terms of what it's like, so that I can put them in the you know, what can it, would I watch that over a lot of these films? Yes. It's somehow, the, it's the beautiful version of idiocracy in a lot of ways. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Let's just take it. <laughs> but it's not in the same time. It's not, because it's the beautiful version of it. In a sense, it's yeah. A, it's a love story. Yeah. Uh, about... 
Idiocracy didn't even make it on the list. This, that's about crazy. like a blue collar worker mm-hmm. who uh, is trying to go with a girl who's probably technically sleeker in a lot of ways than him, and they have to show the. Are you talking about Idiocracy? Either which way am I talking about? You're talking about Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Wally's a loss of his kind. Well, you know. Kind of like, yeah. Right. He's kind of the last of his kind, too, right? Yeah, he's yeah. supposed to be the smartest man on earth at that point. I guess. It does. Uh, Idiocracy, you know, should be. That should be on one of these lists. It should have been. It might be, you know, for science fiction. We'll put that uh, as an yeah, honorable. Possibly. We'll put that as an honorable. Yeah, we can do that. Yep. Um, but that movie's great. It's got. I mean, it's terrifying. Wally. Wally? Oh, yeah. Wally, Wally is terrifying. It is terrifying. But the fat people in the, like, mm, slurpy cars. Right, right. <laughs> With the lids. Right. Uh, and, like, everything is done from the sea, and they just kind of, like... But it's amazing the thought process that went into designing these characters. They're all just liking each other's social media immediately. Yeah. But like, It's our future, man. It is. It's crazy, and it's scary, but it's, again... They're not the focus. The focus is these two robots, and that's what you fall in Except love with. Except I do think by the time we get to that point, we'll be in Matrix land by then. We're already working on so much virtual reality. That's shit. actually a reality. That's a version of the reality that somebody wants to live at that time. Right. They're like, I just want to see everything like that. <laughs> I want to see us all as yeah. No, monsters. like in their mind, they, they, I think that's too, how they live. in that scene where they're looking at each other's social media, they see each other as skinny outside of the chair. Right? I don't in know. In the pictures, I think they're all like Oh, they're... Ma- I don't know, actually. I want to go back and look at it. It's yeah. been a long-ass time since I've watched it. I love that movie, though. I love it. Uh, but that's great. There's great shots mm. in that one. It's there's incredible. nothing on... There's nothing else... There's nothing else on this 100 other films. Right. That is like it. No. Nothing else that's going to start out as nope. a silent film, basically. No. Um, it's essentially a silent film. Yeah. Great, great choice. And that's actually technically the last choice on the list. And we yep. have a couple honorable mentions. But these honorable mentions are essentially just right. They're, they're there. Right. They're just ones They're just that not numbered. We think are great. They just didn't make the cut. They're not numbered. Um, Love Actually. Love Actually is good. Everybody loves that movie. It's oh, got actually. Rick Grimes in it. Uh, right. <laughs> as the dude right, with yeah. the... It's got Liam Neeson. It's got Liam Neeson. Yeah. It's got uh, who play? Uh, it's got fucking it's got Snape. Hugh, Hugh Grant, right? It's got Snape in it. Does it? He's the one that buys the girl the necklace uh, that he thinks likes him at work or whatever. But she's really young, a whole lot younger than him. He's married to a lady. Uh, oh yes, Snape. Yeah. Yes, right. That's right. My bad. I was imagining somebody else. And <laughs> I was like, is that Snape? I'm like, no, that's that's not Snape at all. <laughs> Snape. 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 I can't yeah, do Snape voice. I sound like I'm trying to be a robot. Because <laughs> it is. I cannot do the Snape voice. That's, that's the worst it. Alan Rickman I that's think I've ever heard. By the way, it's Alan Rickman. Um, but yeah, it should get on there. It's one of those, one of the first ones they did of those movies where they're like, let's stick a thousand Yeah, and it can't, that's the thing. Like, that's why. <laughs> that's the problem. Like, it started, it was great because of what it was. Right. But then all the other shit... Right, like that I tried to do that work, format. Yeah, yeah. All the holiday movies. Yeah, yeah. The, the holiday movies. Right. They just piled upon each other. And, and just... technically, the holiday is one of those holiday movies, but yes. it's one of the few that are actually good. Because that. it's not focusing on the holiday. It kind of is. It's at Christmas. Kind time. of, yeah. But. Uh, and the other one was As Good As It Gets. You said you don't really remember this one as well either? Not as well as uh, other films on the list. Uh, but oh, I remember liking it when I watched it. It's probably my favorite Jack oh, Nicholson movie. Easily. Yeah. Um, easily. That's the most... This film is where I'm most like... I'm okay. I understand why you're the character. And I think I also like... It's probably the movie I like Greg Kinnear in the most. Yeah. He's, in terms of you like him as the character, yeah, yeah I like how character. he played the character. Yeah. He was in, incredibly easy to sympathize with, and you wanted, you were like, "Come on, just be nice to him," because Jack yeah. Nicholson was like mean to him all the time. He doesn't know he's being mean. He's like super has Aspergers in that movie. Um, <laughs> he's super bad has Aspergers in that movie. Some of the shit he says is incredible. Um, some lady asked him how he writes women so well and he says it's easy i just uh think of like it's a man but then i remove all logic or reason (laughs) (laughs) fuck who wrote that shit that's brutal yeah that's mean 
but he just says it like casually. He doesn't uh, know that he's being a complete asshole. I feel like, but he's also OCD and like won't step on cracks and stuff. It's a great movie. It's he an plays interesting someone character. with OCD and Asperger's incredibly well. It's like, yeah. I want to watch that movie again. Helen Hunt is great in it. She's great. That one motherfucker that looks like uh, he looks like a Johnny Depp. And he showed up in a lot. He looks like if Johnny Depp and Ethan Hawke had a baby. And his name is real weird. What else has he been in? Uh, like hella stuff. I fucking can't think of his name now. He I, I can't put a face though. to this. That's He's got thing. a silly name. I can't put an, uh, a face to this uh, character. He he was the guy that uh, was the model for Greg Kinnear at the beginning of the movie. And then while he was like I'm posing, some dudes came in and they like beat up Greg Kinnear and stole all his stuff. I'm not remembering this. Oh, man, we gotta watch that movie again. But will I like it as much? I think you'll like it even more. I might more. like it more. This motherfucker. Skeet Ulrich. Oh, okay. Skeet yep. Ulrich. Yep. I knew he had a weird fucking name. He was in Scream. Was he in Scream? One. I don't even remember. He was actually one of... He always just looked like fake Johnny Depp. I see it. Um, yep. But anyway, that's the other movie on the honorable mention yep. list. It's the only movie that I really... That I can think of off the top of my head with a tiny dog that I was like, I kind of want to hang out with that tiny dog because generally I don't. Yeah, really generally think. tiny dogs in tiny dog but films. It was so cute and nice yeah. and awesome. I think that's just the fact that it was nice helped. Into it's got my Cuba mind. Gooding Jr. in that movie. Oh, yes, right. As the guy that scares the shit out of Jack Nicholson because he's scared of all black people for some reason. It's so good. He's such a peculiar character, yeah, dude. It, I know, it's. It's perfect for him. Yes, he and the thing like is, such an asshole. He I plays an asshole. I don't great. Like when people go, oh, Jack Nicholson is a great actor, great movies. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with never seeing a film from him. Yeah. Apart when you, that's why we said this. Like this might be one that he's in that I'm like. You yeah, disliked him as Joker. He's, he's fine, but then if what I'm about The Departed, because I love that movie. But see, that's is that on the list? Yeah, is it is actually. Oh, is it? Yep. No spoilers. Oh, yeah. But it's on one okay. of these lists. Yeah, see, that's... Uh, yeah, there you go. So anyway, that's the list for this That's the time. list for the romance. Uh, Let's see how this uh, episode gets it's a long episode. edited together. It's a long episode. <laughs> we went on a lot of tangents. Yeah, I can't uh, like way more than normal. I know, I can't. Which was a problem. I kind of can't wait to see how people react to that. Because this is a longer episode more. than the previous episode. <laughs> we had zero news. Anyway, uh, that should cover it for this episode. So until the next time, guys. We don't have anything to plug this time. We're supposed nah. to plug stuff. Oh, I've got a Wayward cover. Oh, when do you know it's... What uh, out? It what just issue? got announced. What issue? It's issue 18. Nice. Uh, it's a variant for that, and I will post uh, probably links to that on my social medias and stuff if you guys are curious about that. Wicked. Or if you listen to or watch the... Or read, rather, the Wayward comic. Right. If you um, read it, then you're going to see it. Hopefully grab that one. Yeah, hopefully grab that one. And be like, hey, you know what, guys, at the comic shop? This is a great cover. Let's all talk about it on social media together. And, and high five on yeah. the internet. You got anything else you're working on that no. you can actually talk about? No. Nope. All the things that are awesome are secret. So until the next time, guys. <laughs> Stay chipper chaps. Stay chipper. What up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap. What up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap. What up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap. What up, chipper chap? This is chipper chap chap.